Hello and welcome to the Constructs Armory Mod Spotlight. In Constructs Armory, it's similar to Tinker's Construct, but it's just for armor. So you'll notice in the stencil table, there's an additional seven items at the bottom. So we have here the helmet core, the chest plate core, leggings core, and the boots core. And additionally, we have armor trim and armor plates. Now each item is made up of a core of uh, one of these four, and then also armor plates and armor trim, armor plates and trim. And also you can make this, which is the polishing kit. So the polishing kit is used at the early stage to repair your armor while you're on the go. So you don't have to use an armor station. And here is the armor station. So as you can see on the right hand side, we can see we need the core, the plates and the trim, like I've just said. Any material can have a certain number of traits. It could have a lot of the time it has one trait, but it could have more. A modifier, which is a way to append the armor with something extra, right? You can see some of the uh, materials we've got here: some flint, some bone, some uh, wood, the chest plate core there. Uh, and in this chest, what I've done is I've put some of the perhaps early game items. So the first trait is for wooden, and that's ecological. And what this will do is it will repair your armor for one for one every two minutes so if you have four pieces on it and remember this is to do with the actual piece of armor so as long as you've got it on one of your your pieces of armor here it will be it will repair it um, so if you had say four it'll be four repair every two minutes so stone armor has got the lowest durability of any armor and you can see that certain values so for instance the trade says we have cheapskate on the core so the reason these have all got both is because it's the core which is doing it to them so it's the uh, the chest plate core and the leggings core and the boots core that is putting the cheapskate on it. And what cheapskate is, is the armor piece has 20% less durability. So, you know, and, and even though that's a bad thing, certain effects do trigger off lower durability. So it could, like, we'll talk about that later. And then we also have the cheap as well, which is the armor piece gets repaired, amount times five divided by 100 more. So it's slightly better um, repairing. The flint armor only has one trait, and that is mundane. And mundane will increase the armor piece effectiveness against unarmed mobs by 20%. Okay, so if we look at the, these armors at the top here, you can see they've got very low durability. So we certainly wouldn't want to make a core out of any of them, just because of that durability. And we would like to have... Uh, and then, I mean, and they're not very good materials in general. Flint, obviously, is better because of that reduction against unarmed mobs. But... If we look at the cactus armor, that has got some interesting qualities. So the trait is spiny, and what spiny does, it gives you a 30% chance for each piece of armor uh, to attack for 1 to 4 damage. So it will be a, an effect that gets triggered when you attack. Um, the only problem is, is the, the armor will be damaged uh, in doing that. So you, you actually take 3 durability, extra durability damage from that. So... A good option, actually, with this is for the bone armor to come in. The bone armor on the uh, core, it has two qualities. It has got the calcic quality, and also it's got the skeletal quality. So the calcic quality is is whenever you drink milk, the, all the armor is repaired for 10 durability. And for each armor piece, you're going to get um, a regeneration effect. So say you had calcic on all your armor, on all your armor pieces then you're going to get regeneration four and it's going to so it's five per armor piece so you get 20 seconds of regeneration four and of course if you drink milk you're going to get durability increased on your armor which because this does more damage but takes durability it has that really nice synchronization there which would perhaps work well so finally we have the netherrack armor and you can see we have uh, two traits on this one so aridiculous will increase the armor and, tough and toughness values for the armor piece to how dry your environment is so obviously if you've got uh, low humidity so in and if it's a uh, warm i think i think it, it, it keeps in when it says how dry your environment it actually keeps in in mind both the humidity humidity and temperature stats which of course are well known so the other quality though is infernal and Infernal is, in a, in a sense, quite similar to Flint, in that it reduces damage by 20%. But whereas Flint, with its mundane effect, will increase the armor, the armor effectiveness against unarmed mobs by 
the infernal quality will actually increase the armor piece effectiveness by non nether mobs by 20 percent so it seems to be an upgrade what i've got here is some armor that i've made and if we look at what armor we've got here we can see i've done the same for each piece I've put Calcic, so that will give me that regeneration effect. I've put Spiny, so we'll do extra damage. And then we'll do Mundane, which will give me more power against unarmored mobs. So we can see it. We'll take a look at some of this, this effect in action, because I think it's important to actually do that, right? So you can see the, the little uh, particle effect. And let's try that one more time. So you can see it sort of works like a Thorns effect as well. You see, I didn't even attack that time, and I actually got a carrot, which is quite unusual. Okay, let's take another one. You can see the uh, the armor value is not is not great, but what we can do is say we have this seared tank full of milk, and we can see. Look at the, I mean, let's look at the helmet. 120, 145. We're going to take this. So we've got a regeneration four. That's 130, and all these uh, figures have gone up by 10. So we've got that nice regeneration, and we have the armor effectiveness as well against the zombies. And the great thing about a tank like this is, is obviously I can refuel it very easily, and I can negate some of the negative effects of the cactus with the positive effects of the, the calcic trait. Now the one thing that the one change that I could make here would be, say I wanted to improve, I might want to get the armor trim, right? Because the infernal trait, like I mentioned before, it has the armor piece effectiveness against non-nether mobs by 20%, and whereas the flint trait only provides armor piece effectiveness, the mundane trait, uh, against unarmed mobs. So non-nether is actually better than the alternative, right? Uh, than the uh, flint armor trim. So what I could do is upgrade the armor like this. So I'd put this in here and you see I could then put infernal. You can see the difference. Let's have a look at the difference. So the, I get a small a boost in durability and I think that that works quite nicely, right? So let's swap those out. Okay, so I've chosen my set of armor, and I'm happy with it, right? So because I made the core out of bone, it means that the repair material will be bone. So there's a couple of ways to repair my armor, if I didn't want to do it with, with the method I've already shown. One is to do this, right? So that will repair my armor. The other way you may like to do it, though, is with this, with the polishing kit. So if I take a bone polishing kit, now it says combine with sand, but this is actually a different function. This is just to repair the armor, and there is an advantage to this. So we'll take this, and let's try and repair this piece of armor with some bone. And you can see nothing actually happens, right? But if I use this, it will actually repair it. So what this means is that I can actually repair this without the need of a tool station, and without the need of anything but my 2 point, uh, two by 2 crafting grid, which is obviously a lot more... A lot simpler if you're traveling around a lot. Okay, what I'm wearing now is Prismarine armor. And what I've done is I've just done the core out of Prismarine and I've done the plates and the trim out of stone. And you can look at the amount of armor. You can see I've got a lot of armor here. And that's because of what these effects do. The, the aqua speed simply makes you go faster in water. So you can really just, it's like walking on land really. Really fast through the water. The other effect is this, which is the rough effect. So if you place the uh, arm item in here, you can see I've got this this um, rough damage plus 1.15. And what this means is the armor will do more damage to mobs based on how damaged it is. So by using the stone for the plates and the trim, it'll be easy to get it very damaged. Okay, so if we look at actual armor, we can see we've got all Prismarine cores, and that's what's giving us this huge armor value. You can see that I've only one 
chest plate away from full armor there. So that's pretty good, right? And that's all because of the Prismarine. Now, what we could do, though, is we could try to improve. We, we know that this effect with stone armor is good. So because it will give us a good options on the rough effect, right? So one option that we could do with our armor is if we take the armor off and we put this armor in here, and what we can do is, if you'll notice that there's there's the trim, there's the obsidian trim, but there's also the obsidian plates. Now the obsidian plates will actually decrease the durability, whereas that doesn't happen with the trim. So what we can do is we can change this up. So our durability will go up, but not by that much. We also get the uh, toughness. The toughness does go up as well, but that doesn't matter because toughness is simply... In fact, in a way, it's actually good to have more toughness. Toughness is a way to reduce the damage of high, uh, high, a numerically high value of attack. So if you get so if you get attacked for a, a huge amount. And this way, if we can maintain the roughness damage. We've still got a low durability. You see, if I st put in the plates instead there, the actual durability will be higher, which is not what we want. So that might be a good option to swap all our armor pieces with some obsidian plates. And then that will give us uh, what we want here. Okay, now I want to move on to modifiers. So to apply any modifier, you have to get an armor forge, and you basically put the piece of armor you want in there, and then you put the modifier recipe alongside it. So to get this amphibious modifier, we put in glass and then some uh, prismarine crystals. And you can see I've now got the amphibious modifier. If we look into the table, we can see it says stored oxygen. Okay, so it said 46 there. We'll put this on for a few seconds. There we go. And we'll take it off and then oh I think I actually managed to dupe it there somehow um, and you can see I've got 52 now but you can certainly stay underwater for quite a long amount of time so you can see there's actually these little dots that appear so I had about 50 or so before I went in and you can see I'm down to 22 now so while we're talking about low durability how about this paper paper has got absolutely terrible durability if you look at some of these items, you can see there's absolutely nothing. You can see, this, I think paper must be the lowest durability in the game. But they do have an interesting quality, which is the writable quality. So, if we say we want to get this helmet, we've only got two modifiers left now, right? Because we use the, the, ox, the amphibious modifier. So what we could do is we may want to take some paper armor trim. So what this will do is it will remove the stone and it will actually, you can see, it's actually going to lower the durability, which is actually kind of what we want anyway. And you can see the modifiers now will go up to three. So you can get so you can get additional modifiers. Obviously, if I changed it all to paper, so for instance, if I got a paper core um, for the helmet, you can see I've got three modifiers. Interestingly, I've got not enough durability to replace parts. So that does occasionally happen. It doesn't happen with the trim, though, it looks like. So we make this out of prismarine. So we get the prismarine kit, polishing kit, of course. And we can repair that. And we'll put this in. And you can see now we actually would get an additional modifier. So, so when it comes to modifiers, they will stack per component of the armor piece. So you will be able to get multiple more additional modifiers if you decide to go this this uh, route of making uh, the writable paper items. Okay, so I want to talk about now the accessories you can put in your items. These don't take up any modifier slots, but they do give some very useful abilities. And the hotkeys for these is for the helmet is G, for the chest plate is H and leggings is J and there's nothing on the boots. So let's start by looking at this. So the traveler's goggles. Uh, you need leather for that. Leather, by the way, you, it's got an interesting drying rack recipe. So it's actually quite easy to get if cows are not available. So we have to make the base and then from the base of the goggles, you can see we've got a few options. And we've got, so let's have a look at these options then. So the way we'd want to do this is if we've got our helmet here, we can put our zoom in there, and you can see it's going to show uh, which one we've got. And you can only have one of these. We can't put them all. We can't toggle between them all. We can only do one at a time. Um, so we'll put this helmet on now. 
Now if we press the, zoom, uh, the G key, we can zoom in, and it's a toggle switch essentially. Okay, now the other two, we've got the night vision. Let's just use this uh, helmet. So this will give us night vision. So we'll take a look at that. So time set night. And you can see this is actually going to use up durability. But it does give a permanent night vision effect. So then we have this one, which is soul sight. So you can see we get a little, uh, it's quite a, a small thing, but you just get little these little flames here. Is there something here? I guess there must be something through the ground here. Pretty cool. Okay, the next modifier I want to show is this, the Invisible Inked, which gives the Concealed modifier. So what this will do, I've got a piece of armor here, and we're going to put the Invisible Ink on. And that will give Concealed. So, if we go into F5, we'll put this on. And you can see the armor is not actually rendering. So there is actually something which you can do which is significantly better than this though. And that is to use the Traveler's Cloak of Invisibility. So let's put on our regular armor again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on this Traveler's Cloak. And this again is you have to... What this will do, this is real invisibility. I mean that is just cosmetic, the concealed modifier. But this one, uh, and we'll use the chest plate key, which is for the cloaks, which is an H. So we'll go here. Okay, I've got an idea that I wouldn't mind trying. And that is I've put concealed in each of these pieces of armor. So you can see it's, it's no armor is showing up. Now, maybe I can get true invisibility, drink the invisibility potion, and switch to nothing, right? So this should be true invisibility. Okay, so we've considered various traits. So we've considered all these traits up to obsidian, prismarine, and paper. Let's move on to some of the metals now that we might have to look at. One thing I did actually forget to uh, tell you was that skeletal is a trait which actually increases the armor piece toughness by 50% of original toughness. And that the toughness is, is to do with damage reduction from high cost, high damage attacks. So, we've got copper, so if we look here we can see each of the three items has got Ambitious on it, and Ambitious uh, gives extra XP. Then we have Dense, and what Dense does is it will not take durability damage, and that, that chance will increase when it's at low durability. So again, it might be good for what I was doing with that uh, last piece of armor you saw. We have Iron Helmet, uh, the Iron um, property is magnetic and what that does is it, it drops items and the range increases depending on the number of armor pieces and then we have uh, pig iron so the the um, the core has got bacon delicious and tasty and the plates and the trim just have the tasty uh, bacon delicious occasionally drops bacon when attacked this 2.5% per armor piece and the tasty it actually has a chance of eating your armor to repair it um, so yeah so your food points will go up but your your but it, that will come out of your armor durability then we have silver and this will give undead uh, enemies the um, weakness effect and the duration is similar to with the uh, bone, the uh, calcio effect. It'll be five seconds per armor piece. And the power, similarly, will be um, a level of power per armor piece. And you can see just the blessed for the silver. Uh, lead is unusual, actually, in that the uh, the uh, the plates and the trim all have the both uh, all have two traits. So heavy heavy reduces uh, knockback by twenty five percent per armor piece, and shielding um, reduces damage from magic and withering by ten percent. So slightly less. It depends. It really depends. What this would be very useful in in a lot of um, modded environments. Now I did mention I did mention the bone there, 
and yeah just for the plates and the trim um the skeletal effect there and the steel helmet um you can see the uh the core has got steady and the plates and trim have got indomitable um steady increases knockback resistance and knocks back attackers um a certain distance depending on your total knockback resistance and then indomitable will increase rmp's defense and toughness so pretty good um for raw armor but what have i gone for well i've gone for something completely different i've gone for a silver helmet so that's going to be uh, and let me just explain why i've gone for what i did um silver i went for because the defense is 17. if you look at all the other ones uh this one actually may be higher uh defense is 18.4 so maybe i will swap that out but still obviously is a slightly later game item anyway but the defense is 17 and durability is about average and then i went for i had the choice between i wanted to put copper in for the xp boost so for the plates i saw this is 1.05 2 and 0 this is 0 0.7 minus 3.5 and 2 so the thing about toughness is that often it doesn't it's really the core protection is more important than the toughness value uh unless you're really later game where the the mobs are, are hitting you for more damage and then it was a case of these two were the same so in this case i went for the lead trim so that was what um i got from that and you can see i've got that knockback resistance effect there Okay, I want to talk now about embossment. So embossment is a fairly new mechanic. And what it does is it really makes it clear the distinction between material and trait. So for instance, what you have to do is you put in these three crystals and a block of gold and then an item. And what it will do is it will add the it will add it to the traits, right? But what this is actually doing is, as you can see there, is it's actually adding the steady trait. And that's the trait which you get from steel. But can it do one if it's got, say, two on it? So it will actually add both of them. But you see, what it does not do, though, is it does not change the durability. So, for instance, you've got durability of 17 and defense of 18.4. You'll notice here that when you put this in here, um, the durability and defense do not change. So really all it's actually changing is it's just it's just adding on additional traits, but it's not changing any other property. Okay, I've got some more modifiers. We've got the gauntlet of power, which is just this uh we have the gauntlet base, and then we have the gauntlet of dexterity, it's redstone around that, and then we have the most expensive one, the gauntlet of far reach, the uh, telekinetic modifier, a bit more expensive that one. So Let's put them on chest plate. They have they're exclusive, so you can only put them one on each. So we'll put the power here. And you can see just uses the one modifier slot. And you can see quantum of dexterity, put that on there. And then on this pig iron chest plate we will have the quantum of far reach. Okay, so the gauntlet of power simply increases the power level of the attack. He's not doing much damage, is he? Oh, this is mate. It's because he's suffering from a uh, weakness. Uh. Okay. Then we have this one which is dexterity, which increases the speed. Yeah, you can attack much faster with this. Wow. Let's have it off. And on. Yeah, it's significantly faster. It's about twice as fast as the attack speed. That's pretty good. Uh, the other one is not to do with mobs, though. And that is the telekinetic power. This just lets you have far reach. So you can see it's about double. And I don't believe you can stack it. Okay, there is also something else which is quite interesting. And that is to do with this. So if we take a 
sponge polishing kit. You'll notice it says t toughness 5. And when you search for polishing kit, they all have various toughness. And I can tell you that the sponge is the toughest, right? There's others. So steel is actually 4.5, which is not bad. But sponge is the toughest at 5. What you can do is I've got this, which has got a toughness of 1. Okay, pig iron, not particularly tough. But what I can do is I can put this in here and then we put in the sponge polishing kit and a piece of sand and you can see it will go to polished and it will be a toughness of five. So this is a way to increase the toughness. Again, it's not necessarily that useful um, because it is against high damage attacks, but it is an interesting w and the other use of the polishing kit. One final clarification as well is that the and you can say that was actually the uh, noise of the armor being eaten there. But that wasn't what I was going to say. It was that the ambitious trait, which is provided by copper, what it will do is it will choose a number of additional XP to give you. And it's based on it's based on zero and the number of the range is zero and the number of armor pieces. And yeah, and so that is the tasty effect that you can hear there, which is only which I've only actually got on the uh, just like that. Okay, just to give you another heads up, the uh, dexterous and the powerful will increase your attack speed by 15, and your attack damage by 15, and the telekinetic will give you a two block increase. So here's something cool, which uh, if you think about it, this pig, this uh, tasty chest plate is, is, is eating the durability on the armor, right? So here's one which really synchronizes really nicely with it. If I put this um, necrotic bone on, I'm going to get this effect, which is parasitic. Your armor, your armor will feed off you to repair itself. So that's pretty cool, right? So, so your armor will feed off you, and then you will feed off your armor, and then your armor will feed off you. So it's like really kind of, it's like the circle, circle of life, really, kind of. Um, so, so yeah, let's see if we can get this in effect. We'll try a little. Uh, <laughs> you can see that there's the armor eating. It's kind of funny, yeah. Because parasitic is, is supposedly, um, yeah, it increases the player exhaustion. I think play exhaustion will actually lessen your hunger. Okay, so here I've got Electrum Armor and it's got Voltaic. And what this will do is every time you receive damage, it will build up an internal charge. And then when that damage, and when that charge is full, and the next time you receive damage, it will disperse uh, a sort of shockwave of damage to all enemies within a um, radius of uh, two blocks per armor piece. So a radius of eight blocks. Um, However, you can get it to charge the full armor by getting a lightning burst. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do exactly that. So I'll take a lightning strike here. And you can see now the electrum armor is glowing. So you can see all that damage done. And the armor is now no longer going. It's also this modifier called Frosty Souls. And I've put on a Frosty Souls 2, so it's got two levels. And you can see it gradually cracks. Similar to Frostwalker. Um, pretty effective though. And similarly also to Frostwalker, you can walk on uh, hot blocks. Another enchantment for boots is called glowing. Requires this. You can see we're going to get the glowing enchantment. But if we go somewhere dark, you can see we get a light source placed down. Okay, let's now talk about slime. Okay, so obviously there's various different types of slime. 
Um, the purple slime that you have to use to make night slime, by the way, is a rare drop from the leaves of the purple sapling. This can be quite difficult to get that purple slime for the night slime. And this various things. So if we look at the uh, slime items, we can see that the core has got slimy and bouncy, whereas the uh, trim and I believe the plates as well do not have it. So if we look at the slime. Yeah, we can see just slimy on the... And what do they do? Well, slimy has a 1% chance per armor piece to spawn a slime when attacked. And bouncy allows bouncing and negating full get damage when falling with the same exact behavior as slime boots. And also, you're going to be more susceptible to knockback. And blue slime is much the same. Uh, it has the same qualities. There are some slight differences... And in fact, when you see my armor, you'll see that uh, there is some slight. Uh, if you look at the trim, even if you look at even if we look at this sort of 413, as you can see, there's definite increase in durability with the uh, blue slime. Then we have uh, the night slime. So the night slime has got dramatic on the core, and then the trim and the plates have got invigorating. Um, now, what the dramatic on the core does, and is 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 the uh, when you receive fatal damage, um, it'll be a bit like the Totem of Undying. It will save uh, the wearer from death and heal instead. Uh, invigorating, though, is the perhaps the standout trait from Night Slime. And what that does is for each armor piece, uh, increases the max health, uh, so four per armor piece. It's up to a maximum of eight. So the Magma Slime also has got a couple of features. Um, you can see on the uh, core is auto forge trim and plates is super hot. Uh, so for the core, the auto forge, what that will do is repair armor for one durability whenever fire damage is taken, an additional two durability if that damage is from lava. So yeah, very good against lava and fire damage in terms of durability. Super hot, on the other hand, uh, increases movement speed if you're on fire. So, with that in mind, I create a set of armor and I actually bumped up some of the uh, toughness as well by uh, polishing it with steel. So, you can see I've got uh, magma slime for the core um, and I think I did night slime on the plates and then for the trim it was a regular slime. Uh, or did I do it the other way around? No, it was, yeah. You see, the trim is actually not bad. Um, if we look at all the different uh, trim for the slime types, we've got 14.5 there. That's 12. Uh, night slime is 9. Magma slime is 10. So it's be the best for the trim. It's the, just the regular slime. And then uh, the plates. I think they added the... Uh, and then the uh, plates I did out of night slime. So if we look at the night slime plates, um, you can see we need that invigorating effect. And you can see 0 0.5, 16.71. Uh, looking at some of the other ones in the uh, slime category, not so good. And the final materials to mention, we've got the end materials, we've got the sponge materials, and the firewood materials. So for, for firewood, all you have to do to make that is you just pour lava onto a plank of wood uh, out of the smeltery, and that should do that. And that's got the combustible trait. So combustible is every time you take fire or explosion damage, uh, every living entity not immune to find a radius of 1.5 per armor piece, will be set on fire for duration of one plus number of armor piece seconds. So it's actually similar to a uh, Voltaic, but it will set the enemies on fire instead. Uh, then we have End Armor, and it's got a couple of features, which are Alien and Enderport. And we can also look, uh, so for instance, if we look at some of the uh, the End Armor, you can see that's only got uh, Enderport as uh, the fire was. Uh, the fire will always only have combustible, though. That's the only one on it. And... And the same with sponges, only absorbent. But like I was saying, Alien has got the uh, the that's the trait for the end armor. And Alien is pretty interesting. It gradually distributes a pool of 800 stat points between durability, toughness, and defense for the armor piece. So if you put this on a on an item, this would be not a bad embossment actually. 
um, it will gradually distribute um, points across all the uh, the, the main things. Um, so the end of port one is there's a 25 percent chance per armor piece to teleport the wearer to a random location if you're hurt by lava drowning or suffocation damage and then finally we've got absorbent very uh, very high durability this sponge armor actually um, and it gains two armor it gains uh, two armor points for the helmet and boots three for the leggings and four for the chest plate armor points and two toughness when in rain or underwater and of course you know it's that toughness of five which I alluded to earlier Okay, I've got this uh, silver chest plate. It's got a durability of 384 at the moment. If I then put this in here and put an emerald in, you'll notice a few things change. One, it increases the it increases the durability by 50%. Also, though, the toughness increases to two as well. So you get some nice stuff on this one. It's a pretty nice chest plate, that actually. So you can put the emerald on there. And let's actually see about the uh, stacking effects as well. So we should be able to get another one on there. No, it'll only... St so I think Emerald is only allowed, you only can put on one. And there's just one modifier. Let's see if I can do it again. Emerald can only be applied once. Okay. So that I would say is the most important. Um, Want a bit more durability though? You can put on the uh, the uh, diamond modifier. Uh, increases the armor defense by four and toughness by two. Uh, this one I think you can put on multiple times. So we'll go for a diamond. Uh, not there. So for the diamond modifier, let's see if I can put. Let's see if I can put it on multiple times. Diamond can only be applied once as well. Okay. I know that with the uh, with certain ones, it's not like that though. Um, let's try the steel chest plate I've got here. So mending moss. This this one definitely does have multiple levels, and it's a it's a question that is interesting. Is that does it always take up modifiers? And that's how you make the amending moss. Ten levels for that. Right click a bookshelf. Okay. So you can see stored XP. So. Morning mist. So we need, we need to have another modifier for that. Let's have a. Let's, let's uh, get the. This is a steel chest plate. So we'll just uh, swap out the. Uh, we have paper trim. And we'll take a paper plates as well. So we'll put the steel in here. And we'll swap that out for the trim. And we'll stop, swap that out for the plates. And then we'll take an additional. And then the maximum level for Mending Moss is Mending Moss 3. So that's really going to repair itself quite considerable, considerably. Then we have some other items as well. So, for instance, let's have a look. Take this chest plate. And we want to put some redstone on that. So this increases the speed. Bonus speed of 4.5%. 9.9%. And you can see this one is similar to the, uh, the ones we'll talk about in a moment. You can see we can keep on going with this. And we can go all the way up to 150. This is very uh, old school Tinker's behavior. Doesn't seem to be going up much. It may be that I need to max it out before I can put on another one, right? Let's try that. Uh, 
and that is the maximum level for the speed. Okay, so and that says it says increase movement speed by five time five percent times the percentage of modifier level per armor piece. Okay. I wonder if I put it on and see how fast I move if I notice it. Yeah, I notice it. <laughs> Pretty noticeable that. Okay, so there's a few more as well. So the um chorus rate. Let me see if I've got it's not making it particularly clear if I've got any modifiers left on this one. Um Let's see if we can put this course. So yeah, I don't have any left on that. So it has it has used up all of them with that. So I guess it was fifty for each. Um, the leggings now. So we'll put on this. It increases the jumping power. Let's uh, take uh, some more of this and put them all on. Interestingly, I do have uh, two modifiers left on that one, though. Let's have a look, uh, see how we do on this. And I can jump over here. Very easy. This is actually really nice. Just to be able to jump over that really easily and nice and controlled. Just have to do something about the full damage. But that is a, that is a nice jump. There's no doubt about it. Okay, uh, so the Nether Star it doesn't actually use up a modifier slot. So we go back to this chest, just plus chest plate. You can see I can actually put Soul Band on it, and yeah, it will be bound to me after death. And no modifier slots used. And then if we put this guy on, uh, let's put it on the boots for because why not? And we'll put the cobweb on. Let's give the uh, a sticky. Uh, let's have a look, just check if there's uh, multiple levels for that one. Nope. So we'll just uh, give a little uh, illustration of this one. <laughs> this one is kind of one of my favorite things. And it is this. So if you do that, you get high stride. Let's see how far we can get on this. Two. Nope. So that is the highest we can get. Let's have a look. This should be really nice step assist. Okay, so let's see if we can go up here. Uh -huh, it's two blocks it looks like. So you can imagine how good this is with shulker weight. Really nice step assist that. So once you get later on into Tinkers uh, you get uh, the top tier materials. So Ardite, we've got Subterranean on the helmet and on the trim and the plates we've got Petra Vidity. So subterranean is the more distance you are below sea level, the greater the chance the armor piece will not take durability damage. And then on the uh, trim and the plates, we've got petrovidity, which is if a block made of rock materials is within a three by three square, um, increase armor piece effectiveness by twenty percent and a ten percent to repair armor durability by three when taking damage. So yeah, <laughs> if you. You're going to get repair, get serious repairs out of this. Um, one of the things I actually noticed out of the three is that um, if you look at the trim, Arda has actually got the best trim. And there's certain things I know um, that Arda is a very good material. Uh, with cobalt, you've got uh, featherweight on the core and the trim, and the plates are lightweight. Featherweight is for reducing falling damage, 10% per armor piece. But lightweight has got increased movement speed by 5% per armor piece. Um, we look at Manuelin, we've got uh, Vengeful on the core, and on the trim and the plates we have Prideful. So Vengeful is a 15% chance to inflict a random effect on attackers. That could be poison, slowness, wither, or weakness of 5 seconds. Uh, it damages the armor piece of 3 durability uh, in stacks with multiple armor pieces. That's a very powerful effect, the uh, Vengeful. They get poison, slowness, wither, or weakness. 
So we've seen ones that give um, slowness or weakness, but to actually uh, get um, you know random effect and very likely as well, it's pretty good. Prideful, uh, if damage is received in the last two seconds, increase armor piece effectiveness by ten percent and damage armor f uh, three durability. So yeah, so it's going to be very effective um, for that one. And literally the very final thing to look at. Are these reinforcement, resistance, um, fire resistance, projectile resistance, and blast resistance? So these are things which have got serious amounts of modifiers you can put on here. Made a little selection here, and I believe most of them go to eight actually, but they only use one modifier slot. That's how you can to, can do that. So if I, for instance, say I've got yeah, we'll take the uh, the boots I just made got three and you see I put some uh, there's my bonus speed there uh, let's have a look no, no, yeah you can't do reinforced and but then you have to get lots of modifiers but what I was finding with this let's try resistance now resistant these stack this is the only I think this is the only case where you can actually do this but as long as you actually got this thing which is made like that um, a lot of iron you need for this. You're going to get a lot of resistance. And 8, I believe, is the uh, the right level. And the same for the fire resistance, the projectile. But these are all exclusive. You can't get resistance, and then you get fire resistance, and projectile, and blast resistance. Very much like how you would equip stuff on armor. And that, if you uh, can believe it, is actually everything in this sort of core mod. There may be some additional things uh, that take advantage of other mods, but that is literally everything. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching.